I'm going to talk about capturing carbon by blue carbon habitat in the oceans. And I have two other colleagues, Graham Berlin and Arthur Schwartz, who have done this work with me. First of all, when fossil fuel is metabolized, burned, it goes into the air, but then a portion of it is stored in the ocean. And that's on a gas exchange basis that it enters the ocean, which you see here in this illustration in green. There are ways the ocean pushes this around by upwelling, biological cycles, mixed layer dynamics, but basically 30 to 68% and this is very disputed, of the carbon dioxide goes into the ocean. Where does the excess go? It goes into what you see here as blue areas, the Antarctic and the Arctic area. That's where it goes, enters the ocean particularly. As carbon dioxide rich water and it goes deep under the ocean and then upwells in what is called the equatorial current. This is the Pacific equatorial current, which is blown by Coriolis forces over to the Asian continent and goes through the th through flow into the Indian Ocean. And in the Atlantic, there is an Atlantic equatorial current running along the northeast of South America going into the Caribbean Sea and then the Gulf of Mexico. Once it hits the shallow water, the major plant system habitat take up this dissolved carbon dioxide. And here you see seagrasses, which, sorry, which take up the carbon dioxide and extrude a good part of it through their root system down into the sediment below. Another portion is made into blades, which then decay after 30 days and metabolize and small fungi and bacteria break them apart and they go into the sediment and are stored. Additionally, animals eat the blades and export them. This is the growing seasons. And in the red, which this is the Pacific tropics, the red is tropics, and the orange is subtropics. So here you have subtropics going into the Gulf of Mexico, and the yellow is the edge of the subtropics. So you see that the Mediterranean Sea and the Central Atlantic is yellow, but this part of the Pacific is bright red. This is where the growing seasons are very short and where the major amount of <clears throat> carbon is metabolized into the plants and stored into the root system and sediments. Here I'm showing you a picture of the seagrass of the world. And you notice that here in Southeast Asia, just south of uh, Vietnam and Thailand, so forth, and Northern Australia is a very large and important area. And this is the area that has four to five times more sequestration going on than some other areas like the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea and like the Indian Ocean. To the right is the red box blown up and what you see are not the seagrass, but the mangroves. So all these green edges are the mangrove population. And this is 6 million kilometers square of mangroves, the richest mangrove area in the world in Southeast Asia, 
where a great deal of carbon sequestration and capture occurs. In the tropical parts, which I have just shown you on the other map with red and yellow, it occurs for 12 months a year. In the temperate zones, it occurs for five months a year. And in the boreal zones, photosynthesis and carbon capture happens about three months a year. So if you would like to get the most cost efficiency, you would go into the tropical areas and regenerate as much blue carbon habitat as you can. And this is what I'm suggesting. The next slide shows the Marshall Plan that we have devised. And it, it's the cost is $355 billion over seven years, which when you think of what France and some other middle-sized countries spend on their military per year, this is not so much out of kilter. It is about $52 billion a year. Fifty-two billion a year, and um, this is to regenerate mangroves, coral, seagrass, temperate forest, tropical forest, and boreal tundra. Now you must realize that the forests of the world have only fifteen percent of their original extent still extant, and most of them are in Canada. Russia, Alaska, and Brazilian tropical forests, Cameroon, and Republic of Congo forests, and Southeast Asia forests. And there's just a little in the temperate zone. So that's where the 15% of the remaining forests are. But the oceans have lost 70% of their natural habitat coastlines. So that's why we are particularly zoning in on the mangrove where we would like to restore 50,000 kilometers square, the corals 50,000, seagrass 50,000, where, and these metabolize 12 months a year. So a great deal of carbon is taken in. Whereas for forests, tropical forests would be 35,000 kilometers, temperate forests 35,000, and boreal tundra and forest 20,000. We have tried as an attempt for the next question I know is in your mind, how much carbon will that totally capture? And it's a complex question because the science of oceanographic carbon sequestration is in its very infancy, really only about six to eight years old. But we have, uh, the team I showed you has looked at the Gulf of Mexico where the between the mangroves and the seagrass, which are about a million six kilometers square, they have, in teragram of organic carbon, they have about 400 teragrams, whereas the Caribbean Sea itself has about 1,200 teragrams, or three times more, even though it has, uh, it has, yes, it has just about three times more extent. But Southeast Asia has almost 12, thousand kilometers square and they have for 47,000 4700 teragrams of of organic carbon that they have put as our first estimate we are still working on the indian ocean and we do not have that estimate yet but you can see that working on the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, and, and Southeast Asia, 
could be a large win. The best part about these places is that labor is very low. And there are a lot of villagers and there are a lot of people who would like very much to participate in this. And there are many scientists in these developing countries who also could be very helpful in developing. So this is what I have to say as a new way of capturing carbon and a new way of storing it. And remember, this is where the fossil fuel comes from in the beginning. That's why you put a pipe down and have oil wells that pump it out from Texas, from Saudi Arabia, from Kuwait, uh, and other places. This is exactly how nature did it in the beginning. Thank you very much.